break every chain, 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 break every chain. All sufficient sacrifice. So freely given such a price, but our redemption heaven's gates swing wide, swing wide. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every
and I know he watches, he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled, his tender word. In that case, it could be paid. She was full of it. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven, do just what you said. Sure, the storms may come and the winds may blow up the pain. Stay.
So good evening, everyone, and welcome to Resurrection Beach Metropolitan Community Church. We are so very glad that you are with us this evening. And um, today is indeed, according to the liturgical calendar, Christ the King Sunday. And so we have that, and we also have, uh, we're going to have a moment of remembrance for our transgendered brothers and sisters who uh, have passed simply because of who they are. And we also have the right of membership this evening. So we will move things along as quickly as we can because I know everybody's time is valuable and at least half of us are probably hungry and ready to eat dinner. So I already know that. So with that, let us uh, open our service in- Great and mighty is he. Yes, great and mighty is he. busy not paying attention that I forgot to light the candles. And <laughs> so now we will light the candles, which is just fine, right? So actually, let's see if I can be ambidextrous enough to have the opening prayer while I'm lighting the rest of the lighting the rest of the candles. So Holy and loving God, we thank you so much for bringing us here today as a community of faith. And so we just pray that you would send your holy anointing spirit to fall afresh on each and every one of us as we gather together in worship and in your community. And we just pray that this service would be pleasing unto you. In these things we pray. Amen. Amen. And so that should bring us to announcements. And so we still have a ton of them, but we'll get to them as quickly as we can. So today is the 20th. Yes. So coming up on the 23rd, Diana and Anna have an anniversary. The 24th, Dan has a birthday. The 25th, Don has a birthday. The 26th, Janet and Sharon have an anniversary. And 27th, David has a birthday. And the 27th, by the way, is the first Sunday of Advent. So... Uh, I'm looking forward to that. And with that, let's just shout out happy birthday. You know what? Let's just do happy celebration because that covers everything, right? Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Happy, happy celebration. celebration. All right. And next, of course, we're still collecting uh, duffel funds for duffel bags. And I will be taking those over this week. I was going to do it last week, but it got away from me. So I'll do that one day this week. And... Yeah. This is the last week you're going to see this, folks. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide if we can, Chris. So yes, our truck has made it all the way to Corona. 
Yay! Yay! Yes. We forgot to take a picture of the empty storage. Oh. Oh. Oh well. Oh well. Uh -huh. You can visualize it. Yeah. So, yeah. the other picture. What other picture? The previous one. one. The previous. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's one that's empty. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> so, but there, <laughs> everything is. Everything is packed into that storage unit. So. Thank you all to help fund it and for Chris and Meg and Frida and Louise and Ava and Ace and Wyatt and Jessica and Brittany and Norm and Rick. So thank you everybody that we were able to complete this on Wednesday. And it is just so much better. Yes. So of course, coming up on December 4th from uh, we're collecting these items. As you can see, we have some lovely cinch sets, which we're going to be stuffing with all kinds of goodies. We have some socks, we have toiletries. No cinch sack would be complete without some cookies. <laughs> and we have candy over there. We have some uh, little bracelets that they're going to be getting. We have a bag of motivational stones that have words on them. Um, so we have all kinds of things here. Yeah. And we've got some nuts somewhere, besides <laughs> those of us that are nuts. <laughs> um, some stockings that we're going to be filling some stuff in. And I think some of the things that we're still, oh, and some of the stuff that we still have coming is we have some handmade um, knitted beanies that are coming down. We could use about another 18 or so probably to complete the 40 bags that we're doing. Um, you know, some chalk, some Christmas chocolates are always nice, right? You know, little something like that. Toys. Some little fidget toys. Well, we have fidget toys. We have a ton of uh, grooming aids and stuff like that. Uh, we'll, we've got some other stuff coming in, but some of the things that we're still looking for would be a few more of those beanies, like 18 or so, if we can swing that, um, some chocolates. And somebody made the suggestion that how lovely would it be to have like some kind of a Christmas something or other sticking out of the top, like a little Christmas ornament or, you know, one of those things that says Merry Christmas on it, something like that. And what were some, what were some of the other things that we talked about? Candy thing. Yes, candy canes are always appropriate, especially for kids. Granola bars. Granola bars. Granola bars are very popular. Um, was there anything else that I missed? Any type of snack. Oh, yeah, any type of snacks. Like last year, we had 400 million granola bars. <laughs> Literally, we had like five cases of them. Um, we had some cheese and crackers. We had some of those peanut butter crackers. Any of those types of things would be perfect. Um, there's also rubber chickens that you could get. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you do with that, but whatever. They're funny. <laughs> <laughs> Make us laugh. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what we're going to do on December 4th from 3 to 4 p.m., we're having our annual congregational meeting. So we really need as many of our uh, voting members to be present as possible. Uh, luckily, we were able to reduce our quorum last year from 50% plus one down to 33%. So that is a little bit of a help, but we need as many folks as possible to be present for the 3 to 4 p.m. And of course, the meeting is open to everyone, whether you're a voting member or a member of the congregation, um, but it's open to everybody. And then from 4 to 6, uh, 4 to 5.30 probably. Uh, We'll be doing the Christ Youth Christmas Gift Project. Oh, stuffing the cinch sacks. And then we'll have worship service. And if we don't get everything done, we will continue on with the project after worship service on December 4th. Then coming up on December 22nd. <laughs> so that's the congregational meeting. And that's what we're going to do afterwards. Yes, here we are. <laughs> December 22nd, we have our Christmas Light Harbor boat excursion at Newport Beach. Uh, we have 28 people who have purchased tickets. So it's going to be a really good turnout. And I think I still have two tickets left. Maybe. I'll have to recount. Christmas Day. 
what a wonderful day to be in church, right? And so at 3.30, from 3.30 to 5, we're going to have a Christmas potluck. Uh, we'll be converting this space into a very nicely decorated dining hall. I mean, you know, we do know how to decorate, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do it well. And so then uh, at 6 o'clock, we will have our Christmas Day worship service, which is going to be a celebration in scripture and song. So it'll be kind of like the Christmas cantata. So there'll be some scripture, and then there'll be songs that go with it. And of course, it's audience participation on the singing. So uh, we'll have that coming up. And then on January 1, what we always love to do, a game day and some heavy duty snacks, right? <laughs> and so that'll be on New Year's Day. And then the last item that we have is coming up on January 29th. We will have a full music service again. Uh, there'll be a smidgen of announcements a wee bit of scripture, and a whole lot of music. So we have all those events coming up, and I think that concludes the announcement portion. Yes, it does. So now, you know, this week while we were moving, I went to the SUV to get something. And, you know, my, my center console has two trays in it, right? Well, the top tray was full of all kinds of coinage. Think, guess what? I missed the slot and the whole thing dumped ah. down inside the console. Oh. So, and by the time we got done, it was like almost dark. So I was like, you know what? I will deal with that tomorrow. So I did. And then as I was collecting everything back, I discovered that I'd been saving a whole bunch of pennies and nickels and dimes. Of course, there's quarters in there to pay for parking if you have to. And so, you know, the good Lord works in mysterious ways, right? Because had I never dumped that, I probably wouldn't have gotten around to getting the, the coinage around either. So I'm going to pass this off to someone who maybe would like to um, stuff the pig for me. Thank you. And uh, so, you know, the, the proceeds from the pig and from our general fund go to fund our ministries. And as you can see, uh, we had a pretty good week last week. About $1,200 came in, which is pretty good. And so if you would like to be able to help support our ministries uh, by feeding the pig, either coinage or some green stuff, or if you'd like to help with the general fund, you can do that through one of several ways. And so you can zell us at 714-662-6972. You can go to rbmcc.org and click on the donate button, and that'll take you out to PayPal. You can write a check and drop it in the mail to us. Um, all of those ways you can help fund the ministry and to be able to help us do things like the Youth Crisis Center and all of the other outreach and support ministries that we do. And so with that, we will receive the offering here. And while we're receiving the offering here, Meg is going to go, going to go ahead and get us started on praise and worship. I'm glad everybody's here tonight. And uh, as Pastor Dale mentioned, uh, this is Christ the King Sunday. So I tried to pick out songs that had to do with something about Christ the King. Because <laughs> uh, I couldn't find anything else about his other message about God scattered, God gathers while other people scatter. So, <laughs> but I did find some things about King. So uh, I thought we'd start out with a song that you, I have done before, but not recently. So you might not. I kind of remember it, but it's called Only King Forever. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, this is a great one. And this one always also has king in it. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me and for you. If you get a chance to look it up on YouTube, uh, there's a version by John and Sarah McMillan. I believe the two of them wrote this song. And they do such a wonderful job on this song. So if you get a chance, uh, look that up. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song as you are
seems like everything is dark around us but even in those conditions where it seems like everything is dark and all hope is lost God is there with you and he's hanging on to you and so we're going to sing this song this is kind of an older one uh, called here I am to worship you probably are familiar with it and it does have a king in it <laughs>
So before we get to the scripture, because I think I was supposed to do it earlier on and I forgot, uh, we're going to have our moment of remembrance for our transgender brothers and sisters who have passed. And so, uh, what did I do with, here it is. So we light this candle today in remembrance of those who lost their lives simply for living their authentic selves. And you know, they've been scattered. They've been scattered away from God. But their memory lives on. You know, for the past several years, I've had the privilege and the honor of participating in some joint transgender day of remembrance services. And you know, one of the things that really sticks out is oftentimes when one of our transgendered brothers or sisters loses their life, for many, it's considered not a big deal. The authorities don't even put forth much effort to try and find who the culprit was. And a lot of times, even their own family members, when they write the obituary or they have some kind of a service, they don't even refer to them in their new name, in their new gender. They refer to them in the gender that they were born in, that physically their appearance was even though on the inside, they were not that person. There's a lot of hurt that takes place. A lot of scattering, a lot of driving away from the ones who could truly love and support them if they would. And so let us now offer a prayer. Holy and loving God, on this Transgender Day of Remembrance 2022, on this day where we are reminded of those who come to scatter your children, and especially our transgendered brothers and sisters who are scattered through hatred, discrimination, and even death. We lift up to you each of the souls of those whose lives were taken from them simply for living authentically as you created. We also lift up to you each person who has faced, is facing, or will face in the future discrimination, hatred, and abuse simply for living as you created them to. We pray, Holy God, for the hearts and the minds of those who come against others, who come to scatter others. We pray that you would change their hearts, Holy God, change their minds, change their actions. Change them, holy God, to see, to embrace, and to live, loving one another as you first loved us, gathering together, celebrating our diversity, which you, holy God, called into existence. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord of all and King forever. And so that brings us to our time of scripture. Yep. Jeremiah 23, one through six in the New Living Translation, the righteous descendant. What sorrow awaits the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to these shepherds. Instead of caring for my flock and leading them to safety, you have deserted them and driven them to destruction. Now I will pour out judgment on you for the evil you have done to them. But I will gather together the remnant of my flock from the countries where I have driven them. I will bring them back to their own sheepfold, and they will be fruitful and increase in number. Then I will appoint responsible shepherds who will care for them 
and they will never be afraid again. Not a single one will be lost or missing. I, the Lord, have spoken. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And so our New Testament reading for this evening is from Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79, from the Message Translation. And this is actually uh, an account of the prophecy of Zechariah, uh, for he and Elizabeth and their son, John the Baptist. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He came and set his people free. He set the power of salvation in the center of our lives. And in the very house of David, his servant, just as he promised long ago, through the preaching of his holy prophets, deliverance from our enemies and every hateful hand. Mercy to our fathers as he remembers to do what he said he'd do, what he swore to our father Abraham, a clean rescue from the enemy camp. So we can worship him without a care in the world, made holy before him as long as we live. And you, my child, prophet of the highest, will go ahead of the master to prepare his ways. Present the offer of salvation to his people, the forgiveness of their sins. Through the heartfelt mercies of our God, God's sunrise will break in upon us, shining in on the darkness, shining in on those setting in the shadow of death. Then, showing us the way, one foot at a time, down the path of peace. Amen. And so I heard last week that when I sat on a chair, Y'all can't see. <laughs> so, instead of bringing another item back out of storage, <laughs> we are going to use this. Because I'm going to sit down. <laughs> That's right. Sit down and shut up, right? <laughs> so, in the liturgical calendar for today is, as you have heard, Christ the King Sunday. And some of the songs, as you heard, every one of them actually had the word king in it somewhere because this is Christ the King Sunday. And, you know, we've been over the past couple of weeks talking about how we need to be the example to others of encouraging others. And so as followers of Christ Jesus, that's exactly what we need to do. And, you know, our title for the message for today is where others scatter, God gathers. And yes, I can see where that would be a tough one to come up with some songs for. But you did wonderful. And so God has through the ages used man, actually man-made wars and chaos to try and bring God's people back together again. You know, God used the law to try and bring people together. God used God's son, Jesus Christ, as the, the great physician, as the great teacher, as the teacher of God's love to try and bring people together. God used the prophets to try and bring people together. Because everywhere that God turned, there were people trying to scatter God's people. And all God ever wanted for any of us was to gather us together as one body, loving and supporting each other. But there are those who would rather scatter us because, you know, when we're scattered, we usually don't scatter with more than ourselves, do we? And so it makes it much easier for us to be easy pickings, as they would say. 
as those vultures and those predators come and find us. You know, that's always a show that's on the nature channels, you know, where you see the mountain lion or uh, the, the lynx or whatever circling and looking for that one who has gone astray, who has been separated from the flock or the herd. Fernando absolutely hates those, those shows. I don't want to see that. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but it's part of nature. But that's exactly what happens, isn't it? When people come and scatter us, we don't have that support network around us that we need. We don't have that love, that compassion, that encouragement. You know, and it happens a lot, doesn't it? You know, Friday night I was watching a PBS special on how the Roman Colosseum was made. You know, it's pretty ingenious. You know, they could flood that sucker in about a, two hours and have Navy battles inside the Colosseum. And they also had such a powerful drainage system that they could empty the entire thing in about an hour's time. But you know who paid for all that? All the people that they conquered. Those people were enslaved and used to build it. You know how they paid for it? With the booty of what they stole from everybody that they conquered. And sometimes they didn't steal anything of monetary value, but they would steal the things that meant the most to people emotionally. Because that's the easiest way to, to break their spirit, to scatter them. And so a lot of stuff was uh, pilfered and plundered out of the temple in Jerusalem. They even have a engraved stone plaque, whatever you want to call it, as part of the Colosseum, showing the Roman soldiers gleefully carrying off things like the menorah and other religious objects from inside that temple. Because that way they could scatter the people of Judah emotionally. And you know, even today, we're often, people are often scattered emotionally, aren't they? You know, I take a look at, well, Metropolitan Community Church is the denomination. Our founder, Reverend Troy Perry, was drop kicked through the goalpost of life from the preaching pulpit that he had because oh, they found out he was gay. But yet God chose him and spoke to him and said, Troy, I have called you to shepherd my flock. The ones who have been driven from the sanctuaries and the places of worship where they should have been welcomed. God continues to gather where others scatter. And you know, our uh, Luke chapter 1, 68 through 79 passage is a clear example of that. Because here is Zechariah prophesying about his son who will gather the people that have been scattered by others. He's called to encourage, to lead, to restore. And most importantly, he is called to gather. To gather back together and to gather what others have scattered. And, you know, and I believe for us, and as I have said over the past couple of weeks, that our upcoming Advent season this year, uh, represented by the, the cross that we're going to start using again next week during Advent, which shows Jesus reaching down to someone and that person is reaching down to someone in water. And it's about encouraging others. You know, we find and receive great amounts of encouragement in knowing that we have hope and peace and joy and love in the anticipation of Jesus' birth. But there's more to it than that. 
we have the opportunity and the responsibility to be about encouraging others to be able to find that same hope, peace, joy, and love. And it's kind of like a pebble in a lake where you see those rings going out. I don't know how many of you may recall, but this was 2015, 2016, years before COVID. So we're talking BCE, almost decades ago. I had come across a video on Facebook, I think it was, and it was this like 10 foot round circle of dominoes. And this one person took just a little bit of energy, not much at all, and hit that first domino. And within about 30 seconds, the entire picture that you saw changed into something new. What a symbol for us that it only takes a little bit. Or as from one of our previous messages, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. It only takes something very easy to do. And that can have the effect of changing somebody's life forever. You know, when they're in a moment of distress, showing a little love and compassion might be all they need to put a smile on their face, to make them giggle and laugh and find the joy that's available. Whether that's, you know, um, on the radio this morning, I heard um, they always do uh, KNX news radio talk show on a Sunday morning when I'm taking Fernando to work, right? And this week it was something about cats and how, you know, some people have in-depth conversations with their cats. They know exactly what, what a certain meow means. It's like, hey, you better feed me right now. But you know, in cats and in dogs, they can sense when someone needs a little extra care. When, when someone is sick or not feeling well, They'll crawl up there with you and they'll curl up with you and they will give you that love and that compassion that you're looking for. So if they can encourage a human, we should certainly be able to encourage each other, right? And so as we go into our Advent season in a couple of weeks, I just really hope that we all can not only find the time and the strength, but we can see the opportunities that God is presenting to us to be able to gather the flock, to gather back together those who have been scattered. You know, this uh, past week, um, I think it was maybe Friday during the day, um, I belong to a couple of uh, Christian groups, several Christian groups on Facebook. And one of them is Gay Christian Ministries, which was founded by James Flores several years ago. And another offshoot of that that he has of Gay Christian Men. And there's a gentleman who actually lives in Whittier who had posted that this time of year is very difficult for him because his family does not approve of his lifestyle. And so therefore, not only is he not welcome at the Thanksgiving table, he's not even welcome in their home. Scattered. Waiting for the vultures to come and pick off that one who's scattered, who's been disowned, who has no support network. And so what a sad situation, right? So we are called. We're not the great shepherd. Jesus Christ is the great shepherd. But you know, every shepherd has a whole bunch of assistants. Because, you know, it takes a lot of uh, people to round up and control a flock of sheep. Because when one takes off and makes a run for it, they'll all go. <laughs> My father used to tell stories about Oh, there would be one that would get out 
they were all gone instantly because they just follow. And a few months ago, there was, I did a, a sermon on uh, sheep going over the edge. And remember, I think it was, I don't know when it was, but there was at one point, 1,500 sheep lost their life because one decided they were going to jump off the cliff. And they all followed. And granted, by the time you got to the 1,500, there was a big enough pool of sheep down there that that one probably lived. But the rest of them didn't. So we need to be about encouraging and gathering every one of God's sheep. Amen. Amen. And so now that gives us the opportunity to do something really wonderful. And so I'm going to ask Joyce if you would come up here with me. So um, you don't need to have that deer in the headlights look. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything nasty. <laughs> And, you know, we're pretty laid back here, right? So, for those of you who may not know, uh, over the past few weeks, Joyce and I have been talking five minutes at a time about uh, membership and what it means to be a member of Metropolitan Community Churches. And so, um, today, we are going to officially bring you into membership. Yay! Yeah. So here's just some paperwork for you. It's copies of the bylaws, yada, yada, yada. All the legal fun stuff, right? And so... Uh, memorize. <laughs> well, more power to you because I don't even have it memorized. Thank God for that control F feature where you can plug some, type something in and have it find it for you. So to you, Joyce, who are standing for membership in Resurrection Beach Metropolitan Community Church, which is also known as Resurrection Beach MCC, or for those who like to take shortcuts, RBMCC. Any one of those works. Having completed that difficult membership that we went through, I mean, it was, it was taxing, right? <laughs> and having expressed your desire to join the community of faith of Resurrection Beach MCC, you'll be asked three questions. You know, that's that old number three again, right? And so if you agree, please respond by saying, I do. So relying on God's grace, will you place your faith in Jesus Christ and share in Christ's ministry of love, peace, justice for all, and reconciliation with your brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus? I do. Will you participate fully in the life of this community and contribute to the ongoing ministries of this church with your time, your talent, your treasure, and especially your prayers and your testimony. I do. Will you offer your talents to this community and those this community serves as God calls you and leads you? I do. Okay. So to the congregation of Resurrection Beach MCC, or if you're not feeling like saying that all out, RBMCC, do you as a congregation affirm to Joyce who stands here before you tonight, the right hand of membership in Resurrection Beach MCC? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Will you pray for Joyce as a new member and share with her in Christ's ministry of love, peace, justice, and reconciliation? I will. Okay. Will you accept and nurture the gifts that this amazing person brings to our community? I will. Okay. Will you lead, the, lead her as God calls you to lead her and accept her leadership as God calls her to lead? I will. All right, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, bless us as we welcome this new member, Joyce, into this particular church known as Resurrection Beach MCC. Lead and direct this body of believers Strengthen us in our faith, inspire us beyond carelessness, and forgive us for our failings. Grant us all things necessary for our common life 
and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. We raise these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Amen. Amen. And so just to recognize this very special day, we have a certificate of membership for you. <laughs> And so actually Joyce has been serving on the Council of Ministries now for a few months. So she's already been roped into service. <laughs> and so that should bring us now to our time of family prayer. This was a very busy week. Yes, yeah. one day alone had like what eight. Yes, yeah. yeah. I have a whole sheet, which usually I have a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so Jennifer Lepresto Fry has multiple health issues. Yes, that we need to pray for her. Uh, Marilyn and Taryn. Taryn is positive for COVID, and um, as of the she was having breathing issues. Right. So that's very important. And as of yesterday, she was doing enough better that she was eating some soup. Oh, good. So praises for that. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we also need to take notice that 22 police cadet and fire cadets were mown down on their morning run. We need to pray for them and their families. There were deaths and serious injuries and some that will be life-changing. So those families are going to need a lot of prayer. Uh, Cassie has a big, uh, had a big doctor's appointment. She's evidently having something with her veins. Well, so. yeah, she has lupus. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Um, she also has a tumor on her liver, mm. which they're investigating. And now she has issues with her veins. So she was very concerned about that. And also her uncle, Jimmy Sr., uh, needs to find new housing that he can afford by the first of the year. So they all need prayer. Uh, Jan Purcell's daughter has MS, and she's really been sick for a couple of weeks. And yes. so we need, she needs healing. Uh, Michael has COVID and we're just, um, Harry's father who lives with them is very elderly and I think has some significant yes, health he's on, issues. He's on dialysis. So they're just praying that he will not be uh, infected. And Anton has a, consul a consultation with the pulmonologist regarding nor, nor, nodules on his lung. Yes. I need prayer for reading. <laughs> <laughs> Marty's daughter, Stacy, has the flu and that's serious because she has asthma. So we need to pray for healing for her. Uh, and Frank had went to the hospital or severe foot pain and found that he had a complete blockage in an artery right. and he almost lost his foot. Right. So he's having kind of a hard road back. So we need to keep him in prayer. Yes. He's very painful. Um, <clears throat> and Jan Hinman wanted us to pray for Suzanne's daughter, Julia, who's having medical issues. Uh, whatever she has, she's having medical treatments and with a lot of side effects. So um, that is very serious at this point. Uh, and of course, we need to pray for James Flores, who unexpectedly lost his husband. Yes. And the five who were killed in that shooting. Yes. And it is so senseless. 
And I understand that a couple of the patrons that were there actually subdued uh, the gunmen. So praises for them. Yes, yes. Anyone have a prayer request? Silent requests? Okay, let's go, God. Loving God, we come before you tonight and we just pray that you will be with us each day. We have read an extensive list of needed healing, needed solace for loss. We ask that you would be with each person, that you would touch them with healing and with calm and with peace. I ask that you would especially be with the shooting victims, those who were injured and killed, and also those who were there, because I'm sure they're traumatized. And Lord, I ask that you would be with the lawmakers who are so reluctant to put gun control into law. I ask that common sense should reign and guns should be restricted. When children die and adults die in senseless shootings, it is wasteful and tragic. I ask that all of the people that have health issues on our list, that you would just heal them whenever you can. Put the right doctors and nurses in their path, the right medicines so that they feel better and eventually that they are healed of whatever is going on. So I just ask that you would be with each person who has raised their hand in silent supplication. You know what they need, even when they don't know what to ask for. So be with them. And for every prayer request, grant them peace and joy and grace. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. <clears throat> and so as we prepare our hearts for communion, Meg is going to come and uh, sing for us.
Jesus has made for us. And so at Resurrection Beach MCC is at every MCC throughout the world. This is Christ's table. And what that means is you don't have to be a member of this church or of any church. This may be the very first time that you have been in a church and it doesn't matter because all are welcome to come and receive. And so at every service, we remember the events that took place that night in the upper room. And so after the meal and after Jesus had washed the feet of those gathered there, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And he broke it. And he said to those gathered there, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. And he passed it among them and they consumed it. And likewise, he then reached into the center of the table and he picked up a cup of wine. He raised it toward heaven. He blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And then he breathed into it with the very same breath, the very same spirit that God had breathed into Adam. And he said, this cup represents the new covenant that I make with you today. It represents my blood, which will be shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of this cup and you eat of this bread, remember me. Remember the things I have told you. And so let us now bless these elements as we prepare to receive. Holy God. We just thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would make these elements representative for us of the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, that we might have life eternal in heaven when we leave this earth. And I just pray, dear God, that you would be with each person gathered here and virtually, that they would be blessed and overflowed and with anointing. With these things we pray. Amen. Amen. And so let us now receive the pot. Let us now receive the cup. Holy and loving God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come together as a community of faith, to be at your table, to be at table with Christ Jesus and with one another. In these things we pray. And so that brings us to our closing song for today. 
which is a knee slapper and a and a clapper. <laughs> and a clapper. <laughs> and we finally have the clapping back down again. Yep, so. yep. Everybody got the clapping down. <laughs> Good thing we don't have any of those clap on, clap off things. Anymore. <laughs> Lights will be going on and off. Well, this is going to be our prayer for you that you go out with joy this week, and hopefully you'll have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving that's coming up. Uh, Chris and I are going to be camping, so we won't be here next Sunday. But if you happen to be around the neighborhood of O'Neill Park, stop. Feel free to stop by and. Stop by our campsite. We'll probably have plenty of food there. There's usually tons of food. So you're welcome to come and join us if you Just like. Just bring your own chair. Yeah, bring your own chair because we don't have that many chairs. So if you want to come by, it does cost $5 to get in, but I guarantee that it'll be worth your money. <laughs> Give it up for Meg, who Woo! brought us some amazing music tonight. And so that brings us to the time for our blessing of the food and our fond adieu until next week. So, Holy God, we just ask that you would send your anointing touch to fall afresh on each person who's going to have anything to do with the food that we're going to receive this week from the farm worker all the way to the home cook and everything in between. We just ask that you would keep them safe, free from injury and allow them to be safe at the end of their day. And we pray also, Holy God, that you would bless the food itself that we're going to receive as we go forward from this place to gather those that you have called us to gather. In these things we pray, amen. amen. And so, as we've been doing for the past several weeks, anyone who wants to come up and wish our folks uh, who are joining us virtually a fond adieu and blow them a kiss is more than welcome to come on up. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. We'll do it, right? Oh, here comes Joyce. All right. You ready? So until next week, a fond adieu, and we're all sending you kisses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.